Hi everyone! I am here to continue reading The Jungle Book to you and I'm going to start. Um, we are on the top of page 82. For a moment, Buldeo was speechless. Oh ho! If you are so smart, perhaps you should bring the tiger's hide to Kaniwara. The government has promised a hundred rupees for it. Better yet, jungle brat, do not speak when your elders are talking. Mowgli's laughter turned to anger. He did not like to be scolded, and he stalked off. It is high time that boy went herding, the headman said as Mowgli walked away from the circle. The next morning, Mowgli rode through the village on the back of Rama, the great herd bull. The buffalo rose up from their ma mangers one by one to follow him. In most Indian villages, it is the job of a few young boys to take the domestic cattle and water buffalo out to graze in the morning and bring them back at night. As long as the boys stay with the herds, they are safe, for not even a tiger will charge a mob of cattle. Mowgli quickly made it clear to the other children tending the herds that he was in charge. He told the other boys to graze the cattle while he went on with the buffalo. Then he drove the buffalo to the edge of the jungle, dropped off Rama's neck, and trotted over to a clump of bamboo. I have been waiting for days, Gray Brother said, emerging from the foliage. What are you doing hurting? It is an order. I am working for the village, Mowgli replied impatiently. Now tell me about Shere Khan. He came back and waited for you for a long time, Gray Brother said. But now he is gone again because food is scarce. Still, he intends to kill you. Good, said Mowgli. As long as he is away, I want you or one of your brothers to sit upon that rock so I can see you as I ride out of the village. When he returns, wait for me in the ravine by the great tree in the center of the plain. I will not walk into Shere Khan's mouth. Then Mowgli lay down in a shady spot and slept while the buffalo grazed and wallowed in the mud. Day after day, Mowgli led the buffalo out to their mud wallows. Day after day, he saw Gray Brother's back way across the plain and knew Shere Khan had not returned. And day after day, Mowgli lay in the grass, listening to the noises around him, dreaming of the jungle. At last, the day came when Mowgli did not see Gray Brother at the signal spot. Quickly, he herded the buffalo up the, up the ravine to the great tree in the center of the plain. There sat Gray Brother with every bristle on his back standing up. Shere Khan hid for a month to catch you off guard. He crossed the ranges with Tabaqui last night. He is hot on your trail, the wolf said, panting. Mowgli frowned. I am not afraid of Shere Khan, but Tabaqui is very clever. Have no fear, Gray Brother said, licking his lips. I met Tabaqui at dawn. He is telling his story to the scavenging kites now, but before I broke his back, he told me everything. Shere Khan is planning to wait for you tonight at the village gate. You and you alone. He is hiding now in the dry river ravine of the Wayne Gunga, Gray Brother reported. Has he eaten today or does he hunt empty? Mowgli knew the answer meant life or death to him. He killed at dawn, a pig, and he has drunk too, Gray Brother said. Shere Khan could never go hungry, even for the sake of revenge. Oh, what a fool, Mowgli nearly laughed. He has eaten and drunk and thinks I will wait until he has slept? No, together with the buffalo, we will take him by surprise. The buffalo will not charge unless they catch wind of him, and I cannot speak their language. Can we get behind the tiger's track so they can smell it? Shere Khan swam far down the Wingunga to hide his scent, said Gray Brother. Tabaqui must have told him to do that. He would not have thought of it himself. Mowgli stood with his finger in his mouth, thinking. 
The big ravine of the Winganga opens onto the plain a half mile from here. I can take the herd through the jungle to the head of the ravine, but he would slink out at the foot. We need to block the other end. Gray brother, can you cut the herd in two for me? Not by myself, Gray brother said, but I have brought a wise helper. A great gray head lifted up from a nearby hole in the ground. It was a head Mowgli knew well. Akila, Akila, Mowgli clapped his hands. I knew you would not forget me. We have work to do, Akila. Cut the herd in two. Keep the buffalo, cows, and calves together, and the bulls by themselves. Akila and Gray Brother ran in and out of the herd, separating it into two clumps. The cows circled their calves. They glared and pawed the ground, ready to charge if one of the wolves stayed still long enough. In the other groups, the bulls snorted and stamped. Although they looked more imposing than the cows, they were far less dangerous because they had no calves to protect. What now? Akila asked. Mowgli slipped onto Rama's back. Drive the bulls away to the left, Akila. Gray brother, keep the cows together and drive them to the foot of the ravine. How far? Gray brother asked, panting and snapping to keep the clumps of buffalo separate. Drive them until the sides of the ravine are higher than Shere Khan can jump, Mowgli shouted. Keep them there until we come down. While Gray brother led the cows to the ravine, Akila turned the, bills the, turned the bulls toward the jungle. Turn them swiftly, Mowgli called. Careful, Akila. One snap too many and the bulls will charge. Rama is mad with rage. I wish that I could tell him what I need from him today. The bulls crashed into the thicket. The other children, watching the cattle a half mile away, saw what was happening and hurried to the village as fast as their legs could carry them. They shouted that the buffalo had gone mad and run away. Mowgli's plan was simple. He wanted to circle the bulls around to the head of the ravine to catch Shere Khan between the bulls and the cows. He knew that after a meal and drink, Shere Khan would be in no condition to fight or clamor up the sides of the ravine. Using his voice, Mowgli soothed the bulls in front as they went. Akela dropped back, only whimpering when he wanted to hurry the bulls at the rear. They made a wide circle so Shere Khan would not hear them coming. When at last they reached the head of the ravine, Mowgli looked with satisfaction at the steep sides. They rose nearly straight up, and the creepers and vines that grew on them would give no foothold to a tiger trying to climb out. Let them breathe, Mowgli instructed Akela. The bulls have not caught wind of Shere Khan yet. I can tell him we are coming. He is already in our trap. Mowgli put his hands to his mouth. His shouts echoed down the ravine, jumping from rock to rock. After a long time, they heard a reply. The drawling, sleepy snarl of a full tiger waking up. Who calls? Shere Khan whined. It is I, Mowgli, cattle thief. It is time to come to the council rock. Mowgli turned to look at his old pack leader. Now, Akila, hurry them down. Down, Rama, down, he said to the bull. The herd paused for an instant at the edge of the slope, then one by one charged over it, sand and stones flying up around them. Once the herd started running, there was no stopping it. As they reached the bed of the ravine, Rama caught Shere Khan's scent and bellowed. Now you know, Mowgli said from Rama's back. A storm of black horns, foaming muzzles, and staring eyes whirled down the ravine. The terrible charge of the buffalo herd was something no tiger could hope to survive. And that is where I'm going to stop today. I hope you enjoyed it and listen tomorrow to see what happens next.